Okay, let's uh, make a pattern and try to read this shape. I scribble a couple of lines here, pre-scribble a couple of lines, but I'll explain to you what these lines mean, and then I'll show you on another piece uh, the, same, the same lines. And eventually I'm going to take this off and show you exactly what I mean. Now, if you notice that I've cut a window here, and I put these lines across here and across there, and I've got all these circles. These circles means the amount of shrinking or the size of the, I'm sorry, the amount of blocking. These are the amount of blocking you do, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And these, of course, are your tucks or your, your, your shrinks. The main thing you need to watch is that the length of them, the length of this shrink compared to these. Now once you've flattened the panel out and you've got all the information, you can actually draw them on it. If you're not familiar with metal shaping, you can draw them, you can draw where to block and start the process. Okay, couple of things. Here, let's start off with this one. As you can see, this looks like it wants to shrink, but you don't shrink it there. You say to yourself, it needs to be straight. If I pull this down, now we're talking about reading patterns here. If I pull this down where it needs to be, what does it show? It shows that it wants shape here. Look at the paper. I get the camera to zoom in a little bit and have a look at this area. And what does it tell me? That it's got a little bit of shape here, but very little through there. Okay, and obviously, very little shape through here as well. That does not mean you leave that raw, but it means that you've got to be careful and blend it in. So, you block here, you reduce your blocking, or the, um, or the size of the blocking right through here, and you do very little shrinking through here, and as you come here, you do more and more and more and more and more. Uh, same thing here. You do your blocking here. That will cause a pucker, and you shrink it down. Here, you can see nothing's happening here. It's in a matter of willing a little bit, and then bend it. And you use a buck or a gauge a profile to tell you how far to go, obviously. But let me show you on another panel the setup. So there's a panel that I made. And if you look at the shape of this panel with the light, and I can turn it so you can see what I'm talking about, but have a look. Have a look. There's very little shrink down here, and then they start to get big. And the blocking is down here. Then of course, by blocking it here, this will go a little bit hollow, so you keep your eyes on it. You've got to keep that up. But have a look. Look where the shape is going. It's exactly the same. I'll take it out and show you. Okay? So, the main shape is here it is created by blocking here and less and less and less and less and less. Very little shrink is done here. Sometimes you don't do much. But when the shrinking becomes a little bit bigger here, 
it gives you that that shape here as you can see when I pull that tight because remember look at this a lot of people will think oh, I got a shrink there you don't when you pull that tight where it's supposed to go it shows that it needs some shape here so if you look at this when it's that straight there it puts some shape into here and that's exactly what happens here see that now it takes a little bit of practice to then blend this shape into that little shape because that obviously is going to run in into the next panel and that unfortunately is trial and error so from this shape here to that shape there to then very little shape through here because if you keep going with the B shape through here well you end up with that and this will not blend with the next one so now that you've seen this I'm gonna take that paper pattern see these lines remember I said to you that I cut a window and I got these lines here well let me take that paper pattern out and show you exactly within a couple of mils where I'm at and of course that can be changed when you wheel if you happen to be three or four mil light or three four mil lower you can change it when you wheel. So I'm going to put this away. And I'm going to take this pattern off and show you this. Okay, I've got the pattern now. Obviously this will be all be straightened. So you can lay it back. This needs all to be straightened out. Take all the packers out, clean up all your edges, and mark these details on your blank. If you keep it at that point, it's not going to tell you much because the paper here will lengthen. And some of these could be in the wrong spot. But let's go back into this. These are the lines that you saw me marking on the window that I cut. And just as a, have a look. Here we go. There's your shrinking. There, I'm sorry, there's your blocking. And very little through here and there's your shrinking again same thing and here where before the paper was hanging out here and you and a lot of people will think oh I got to shrink that but well, you don't because when you put a little bit of shape there as mentioned before that'll tighten up and the same principle go when you got a loose edge if you've got a loose edge and you don't want a loose edge, well, you don't shrink it because you're going to put lumps all over it. You will, you will here and that will tighten your edge. But in reverse, you will here because you're shaping it and you tighten your edge down. So that's how you read the pattern. If you gave a good look at this panel, you can clearly see where the main shape is or let's call it the backbone of this panel it's rear there's your backbone right on this area here you're shrinking you're wheeling and then of course your flat part and the blending and it all becomes from here it all starts here. If this is not right, because you've 
didn't shrink in an half or didn't shrink an, or didn't shrink an half or whatever, if this backbone here is not right, nothing else will be. So, again, make your paper pattern, draw your lines, draw your where you blocking her, shrink it, and then work off that. Okay, so that's another way to read a pattern on a different on a different shape. It helps to have if you haven't got a buck, it would then help to make profiles, which in this case are the station of the buck, and you keep putting it on. If you're not too sure, you can then cut some of these. It's only MBF, and you put them on the job at different let's say 100 mil or 80 mil or 90 mil, so you know exactly where you're going. Because let's face it, without profiles, it's gonna be a long, long, long process. And chances are you put the shape in the wrong spot. A good metal shaper could get the shape out and put it and change it. But for a beginner, you need to have, you need to have stations. You need to have stations, okay? And of course, the overall station, the overall um, profile. Because when you make the next panel, and I'll show you that in a minute, it also got to flow in. You can't have a panel that looks like so, or like so. It's got to blend in. So now we're going to go on the next pattern, and that's the back part of the, of the mudguard. And realistically, if you've got a profile or a sweep from that, you can then, there's very little shrinking done here. Matter of fact, there's some stretching done here, because this got a return coming in and going up. And a couple of other things, that shape here is totally different than that shape there. So you've got to be able to wheel and blend between this shape and that shape. So I just want to show you here. If you look at this here, it is straight and the paper is not doing anything, which means that after stretching there, you can see where the stretching is to be for the return to happen. So you stretch a little bit here and you stretch that out. That needs to be stretched. But it, it also tells you how far you put the stretch, because if you're going too far down, you're going to hollow this out. So there's two things you've got to think of. Keep that to the profile or to the sweep, stretch that, and blend that stretching in. And that is done after the main shape is in. And I'll show you on the panel in a minute that one of the students had done here. Then, of course, you keep throwing it on, check your sweep, look at it, check your buck or check your sweep, and you go from there. So nothing's happening here, as you can see, just a little bit of wheeling to fill it in because you can't keep that flat. Flat is hollow, remember, so you've got to, from flat, from flat through here to a little bit of shade through there, blend it into the front, and then wheel down and bend it around. Now, if that's confusing, I'm going to show you the panel with possibly 20 minutes from cutting the blank. 20, 25 minutes. Okay, this is the other side, obviously. We've cut our blanks. And as you can see already, 20, 20 minutes, not even that. I think it took less than that. But what you can see here is where we shrunk, where we blocked it. You can clearly see here, I'll zoom it in. You can see the, clearly see here the blocking marks and where we shrunk it a little bit. But here, no work's done there except a little bit of stretching. Now, I didn't go and stretch it all the way immediately because you could go too far. And if you go too far here, you're going to hollow it out there. So you've got to stretch that and keep your eyes in there. 
not to all of that out. And once that's stretched, you then blend it in and keep going in that fashion. You can clearly see here that this part is stretched a little bit, not too much through here, but just a little bit here. So you can come in with the wheel, lift up, and let that shape out. And then of course here, it is straight because, and I'll draw it, you can't have a return that does that and then automatically goes that. It just doesn't look right, does it? In other words, there's your return and there's your shape. But there's got to be a part in the middle where it's straight so you get that look. And then the return. Yeah? So, you can see here, like you saw on the paper pattern where I cut it. There's your stretching. Stretch it a little bit here. Make it longer and let that out. Lift up and let that out. So what that happened is this will get a little bit longer, enough to go around the back. This will go lower because you stretched it and it's just been longer, it will drop. And then you blend it to a straight point, which is here, and then you start your shrinking because they're going that way. But at all time, you need to keep an eye through here. This got to be the same shape of the sweep and it's got a match to the next panel. Here, like the paper says, right there, it's only a little bit of willing to fill it in a little bit, because it ain't flat, dead flat that is. So here, you need to very lightly bend it to the shape of the outside of the mudguard, and coming in to a different shape through here, so the wheel arch match. And you, if I take the paper pattern out of, out of this, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So, again, the paper pattern, like I, like I showed here. There's our cut. There's the amount of metal that is not much, but it's there, the amount of metal that we need to stretch. That's the area that you want to stretch and blend. You don't want to go any further. Why? Because I just said, that's got to be straight through here. And then blend into the, to the panel. So again, the paper, and then of course here, you can see it's straight. See the straight point here? But here, look, needs to be shrunk. See that? Needs to be shrunk through here and filled in to run into that. I'm going to take the paper pattern out again and show you on the panel. Okay, so I got a little bit of plastic here. And I'd like to show you what's happening here. So I'm going to put that on the top of the guard. Right there. Now I get the uh, cameraman to zoom in. And you can clearly see where we stretched it, where the paper tell us to do. So. We stretched it, we stretched it a little bit here, and we came up. Okay. Then here, you can see that it's just a straight point. And then here, if I take that down this way, okay, you can see that there's a straight point here, and then they start to curl around. So, stretch, stretch a little bit, get the return going, keep it straight through here and trying to blend it into that point because at the end of the day it's got to run into the next panel not only here but here okay so that is fairly straight as you can see but then very slowly very slowly start to take shape here and come into the front panel but at all times you need to blend this shape in, which is a lot rounder than that, and yet keep it straight. This panel is not full, but it ain't dead flat either, because dead flat will be look under. And you can carry that all the way down until you bend it. So that's how you read the patterns. But it takes practice. It takes 
an eye, it takes visions, it takes whatever you like to call it. it that only comes from practicing. I can be explaining here for a month of Sundays and unless you practice and try it and see what happens to metal from the paper pattern, you won't understand. So my suggestion to you is to, whenever you've got a chance, grab a bit of metal, start to shrink. It can be a nothing panel, but start to shrink and start to block and see what happens to metal. Only by learning what metal does, you could anticipate what's going to happen and how to fix if something bad happens by either releasing an edge and let the shape out or re-block it or re-wheel it or whatever it takes, but it takes practice. Um, what we're going to do is, on the ne as I mentioned before, the next video we'll just make the front panel and then on the next video after that, we're probably going to make a sample of that so you can clearly see the action that I take to get that going, to get all this going. Okay? Uh, and eventually, if you start practicing, you, you'll get it. It's just a job. It's just a part of learning. Okay, guys. Uh, the next time I'll see you will be when we make that front panel and I might be able to explain a little bit better with some actions uh, for anybody that probably di didn't understand. But trust me, once I start working on that and you see my actions, you'll understand what I mean. And then of course you've got to practice. Practice, 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 practice. i put it to you this way. I've had 51 years of practice. 51 years, and you have 10 days, two years, one year, one week, so that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. See you guys, see you next time.